Hello, I'm Steve Roberts with the Arkansas Activities Association with a video today to hopefully help our officials and our coaches be on the same page when it comes to the rule changes from the NFHS 2023. We're going to go through several things today briefly uh, and again make sure that our coaches and our officials are on the same page uh, with the new rule changes. First one's very simple. Towels previously had to be the same color. Uh, if a player wore a towel on their belt, they had to have, all players had to have the same color towel. That is no longer the case. They can be different colors. Uh, they still have to be a solid color and they still cannot contain more than one manufacturer's logo and one uh, school mascot or logo. So can't be multicolored towels or and that type of stuff. They have to be a single color. But if your quarterback has a white towel, and uh, somebody else wants to wear a blue towel, that's fine, as long as it's a single, solid single color uh, with one logo uh, from the school and one manufacturer's logo is allowed. Uh, the other rule change uh, emphasizes when a player is technically back in bounds after being out of bounds. Uh, really not something that's a big change for the way that we've been officiating, but if a player gets pushed out of bounds, and the ball is thrown to him while he's out of bounds, and he leapt where both feet were off the ground and touched the ball, batted the ball back to one of his players. Uh, this situation is now more clearly defined. That player is considered to still be out of bounds because he has never established himself back in bounds. Now, that's gonna be officiated uh, in a couple of different ways if the player was pushed out of bounds, he cannot, he can come back in and reestablish himself as a player. So there would be no illegal participation or illegal touching. But if the player ran out of bounds on his own, he cannot come back in and participate. It would be illegal touching or illegal participation, for, depending on the situation. Uh, the next rule change was the added criteria to a defenseless receiver. They have added to the definition. And basically, you can no longer come in, uh, player goes up high, receiver goes up high to catch a football, and a defender comes in to him with a launch, meaning arms, elbows, hands are behind. He's coming in with the shoulder, with the crown of the helmet, whatever, and launching into that receiver. That receiver is now defined as a defenseless receiver. If the defender does the exact same act action, but comes in with arms first, as in a wrapping action, or with open hands, he can hit him as hard as he can, as long as his hands come first. Uh, so again, the receiver over the middle, ball thrown high, goes up to catch the football. If, if you launch into him, hands behind the body, hands down to the side of the body so that you're leading with your shoulders up, that uh, receiver is a defenseless player. But if you come in with your hands first, arms in a wrapping motion or open hands, or if you're from an angle where you're actually making a play on the ball with your hands, then uh, that receiver is not a defenseless receiver. The next one, uh, probably something that a lot of us never even knew was in the book. They have removed intentional from pass interference. Uh, there used to be two rules, pass interference, the rule, uh, the enforcement was a 15 yard penalty and intentional pass interference was the 15 yard penalty plus another 15 yards because it was deemed intentional. They have taken that out. I have not seen a 30 yard pass interference penalty in a long time. Matter of fact, I don't know if I've ever seen a 30-yard pass interference enforcement on a penalty because it was deemed intentional. But that is out of the book now, so all pass interference is now 15 yards. So there's not an option for the additional 15 because the, the official deemed it to be uh, intentional. The last major rule change has to do with the basic spot enforcement. Previously, uh, if you had a holding call by an offensive lineman behind the line of scrimmage, let's just say that uh, it's first and 10 and you get a holding call on a drop back pass seven yards behind the line of scrimmage, 
Previously, that penalty would be enforced from that spot seven yards from behind the line of scrimmage. Now, penalties that occur behind the line of scrimmage are now go, for the most part, go back to the previous spot. So it'll be at the, it'll be administered, the penalty will be administered from the, line, the previous line of scrimmage rather than the spot of the foul. Now, there are some nuances about this that uh, this is a major change, so we're still sort of a work in progress. There are some things that we need to make sure that we understand that if the, if the result of the play ended up beyond the line of scrimmage, uh, then there are choices. So uh, I encourage everybody to go through the rule book and read that, but the basic emphasis of that rule is that if a penalty occurs behind the line of scrimmage, the penalty is now enforced from the previous spot. A couple of other things that I want to make sure that uh, we go over today in this video, and that's uh, covering the points of emphasis from the National Federation of High Schools when it comes to football for 2023. Uh, the first is making sure everybody understands that uh, despite the changes in the NFL rules and the college rules, when it comes to aiding the runner or helping the runner, the ball carrier, the, the player that has the possession of the ball, the NFHS, NFHS rule has not changed. It is still illegal to aid the runner. It is not illegal to push the pile. So you see in NFL and college football now a very prevalent short yardage play is to send somebody in motion or to move a tailback or a fullback or an H-back right behind the quarterback, and the quarterback takes the, spot, takes the snap, and there is immediate hands on the quarterback pushing him forward. That is illegal, continues to be illegal in high school football this year in the state of Arkansas and all over the, the country with those who use NFHS rules. So you cannot aid the runner. You cannot help the runner. You can push the pile. The difference is where are your hands? Where, where, who are you pushing? If you're pushing a lineman who's connected to or trying to push that pile, that's fine. But you cannot put your hands or any part of your body on the person that has the ball. You can't push, pull, in, in any way help the runner. Another point of emphasis is communication between coaches and game officials. Inciting crowds with antics that clearly uh, create an unsportsmanlike environment uh, has become an issue. At some point during most games, the coach on the sideline and one of the officials on the field are going to disagree as to what the call should be or should have been how it should be enforced. At some point, that's going to happen. The NFHS begs our coaches and officials to adopt a manner in which to address those disagreements in a civil process. Coaches, please keep your arms down to your side. Don't be waving your arms, chopping at the official, pointing, uh, those types of things. Officials do the same thing. Approach the, co the coach in a professional manner. It's okay to cross your arms, keep your arms down to your side. Don't be pointing as well. Try to keep those uh, discussions, those disagreements, uh, civil so that crowds are not incited because of the antics of the coach or the official on the field. So uh, a huge point of emphasis this year is to have that conversation prior to the game, coach to officials, say, okay, at some point we're going to disagree with what the call should have been on the field tonight. How are we going to handle that? Let's talk about that. You need to call me, call timeout. You need to get my attention, whatever that might be. Have that conversation prior to that disagreement occurring because it's going to occur. Uh, everybody's competitive. Officials want to get it right as well, so have that conversation prior to the game. Uh, the next one is similar to that, and that's an emphasis on game management. Um, having issues uh, in the stands or outside of the playing field, those issues are the role of the school administration and the school administrator on duty. 
Though that is not the role of a game official. A game official should never toss anybody out of a game. A game official should get a game administrator who makes sure that the crowd uh, is taken care of. And that person will take that person that the official uh, identifies out of the game. So, uh, again, it's the school administrator's responsibility to maintain the atmosphere that's conducive to high school and education-based athletics. The last point of emphasis is pants covering the knee. NFHS rules are very, very clear. The pant must cover the knee and it must have a knee pad in the pant. The knee pad must be unaltered from the manufacturer's design. I mean, you can't take a knee pad that is shipped to you from the manufacturer and cut it into a little donut and expect it to pass. You can't have pants taped above the knee. The official's question is always, what do we do about that? Again, the NFHS rules are very, very clear. If a player is not legally equipped, equipped, send that player to the sideline until the player becomes legally equipped. So they have to go out for at least one play. If they pull their pants down, and have a knee pad in their pants, then they can come back and play. Um, get a lot of questions about alternate knee pads. Can we wear volleyball knee pads and keep our pants pulled up? No. Has to be a football knee pad designed by the manufacturer to go in the pants as a football knee pad. And can it be unaltered from the original design? The other question that I get from coaches and officials is, what, what if... Uh, I've got nine players out there that are not equipped legally. Should they stop the game and send all nine of them off? Um, we've had that discussion, and they certainly can by NFHS rule. I would prefer that they take one of them and say, you're off until you're legally equipped. And the next play, take another one, and then another one so that we don't have a huge stoppage of play trying to get a whole offense back on the field or a whole defense back on the field. Uh, again, guys, this is not an issue that's going to go away from the NFHS, from the Sports Medicine Advisory Committee. Uh, we need players to be legally equipped and it's the coaches and the officials' responsibility to make sure that that occurs. Please call our office at any times if you have any questions about the NFHS rules, uh, the changes, the new changes, the points of emphasis, or anything that we can help you with to make the 2023 season a productive season. Thank you for what you do for kids. Education-based athletics changes lives, and you're a huge part of that as officials and coaches. We appreciate all that you do. Best of luck in 2023. Thank you.